start at the top of the fixture list. Arsenal three. Why is that? The, why is that the top, bro? Because the first, the first, first one of the weekend, played. bro. Shouldn't Al- be the Al- biggest Friday game. Shouldn't be the biggest game last time. No. It just delays mm. the pain, bro. Just right, let's do it. Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. Go on. Let them have the floor. Let them have the floor. Do it. Can I call it ISO? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that my camera? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> monologue. Damn one. Cool monologue. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the way. You wanted to zoom in on your face as well. Nah, 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 nah. I'm joking. I'm right, joking. It'll take a lot to beat last week's monologue. So uh, no, I know. To be honest, I did actually plan to come in here mm-hmm. and light you lot up, but. I thought, let me not do that because it does feel, it does feel and look like I've been on a bit of a mission to target Arsenal and their it fan base. Feel you have been because yeah, they been. don't even see what you do off mic. Yeah, but <laughs> but um, I will say, although as I as I said at the start of the pod, I did have Southampton coming away with the result. I was also still shocked at the nature of how they just bang one 0 bang two 0 I was not expecting that. Oh. I was not expecting that. So look, let, let's let's break down the sequence of events. For those of you who uh, listened to a football podcast but didn't catch the highlights of the game, um, we, I say we, Arsenal, <laughs> <laughs> impartially and all that, um, went down, went 1-0 down in what, the first two minutes? Mm, very very early. Due to a goalkeeping error, what, 24 hours late after uh, after David De Gea. The, Senor De Gea did the same. I think <laughs> Ramsdale was trying to do his best De Gea impression. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I, and I think at that point, so we've discussed a few times about the fixture list, right? You're going to get to a point in the season where people are fighting for their lives. So the certainty of games is probably a, a percentage more uncertain, right? But percentage less certain. So then you give them a goal like that in <laughs> like the first minute or two, it's going to give them a boost. It's going to give them something to, to, to cling on to. It's going to give them something to fight for. Whether they've got the quality or not to capitalize on it is a different story. But that early on, you know, James Ward-Prowse said after the game, if you said to me before, you're going to come away from here with a point, that would have been a good result. You give them a goal in the first couple of minutes. It changes their particular motivation. It should have still have been enough time. You know, even in commentary, they were like, look, there's enough time here. If I still play properly, they'll be fine. But you can't give that kind of gift to anybody in this league. I don't care where they are. But it, is it really a situation where they're fighting for their lives in the Prem? Because, I mean, let's be honest. They're bottom of the table. Mm. They're not really going to win, let's just say, 80% of their matches between now and the end of the season and pull and drag themselves out of the, out of the like relegation. That, I doubt it. I think, like I think that was a situation where it was two things that are two things have met, right? Mm. They've turned up because it's Arsenal, mm. because Arsenal were top of the table. You know how that thing is when you're the best, everyone mm. plays their best against mm. you. So therefore, you're now fighting, playing. No game you have is just a walk in the park yeah. because every, every team now wants and to don't perform their best. Over. Exactly. And then on top of that, Arsenal, admittedly or unadmittedly, are in a bit of a slump at the moment. So I think those two things have met and it's just, you know, Southampton have managed to capitalise. Yeah, and I, and I think, I don't know. Mark, Keith, what do you think before I even get into this any further? First of all, the way the, first, the, way the game started, right, the, the first goal, mm. diabolical. Yeah, yeah, like, I agree. That pass, it wasn't even going <laughs> to get to his intended target. Who was his intended <laughs> target? Was it Sinchenko or something like that? It oh, wasn't going to get yeah. there. Parte, I don't know. It was so... Under here, that pass is multiple times worse than the hairs. Much, yeah. well, I think we need to touch on that because I'm, ver- I feel very oh, strongly. Yeah, we'll get that. to that. I feel <laughs> very strongly. That. But the the, fa- the facts are, yeah, we keep making these silly, stupid mistakes. Obviously, I get playing out from the back because that's what the manager wants. But sometimes you got to switch it up. And after seeing what David had the day before, you would have forgiven them for just launching it, getting the first goal. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Even though it's happened. Hindsight is a terrible thing, obviously, or whatever, a wonderful thing. But my point, the fact of the matter is, is if if you play it out from the back and they continue to do it, it's not like like the um, what's it called the goal was like, oh, you know what, let's stop doing that for two mm. so They just carried on doing it to yeah. the point where you almost couldn't concede another goal from it. Launch it for the for the next ten minutes. Try and get a goal, get on top, and then start playing out from the back. I, I don't think that works with the type I, of manager I, we have. Yeah, but, no, but I, you I, gotta I, change it, bro. You gotta change it, man. You can't <clears> be giving away silly goals like that, man. So it's annoying. 
the way I see it, hmm. is that granted you guys haven't been in this position for a while, and that's not like a, a dig or anything, but everything that you see from the outside looking in, them digs, especially the fans, <laughs> it looks, it all looks very emotional from the outside mm-hmm. looking yeah. in, and I think you, you can only compare it to Liverpool because they're the only team to kind of challenge Man City of late. I think when we kind of been in those positions, Klopp has kind of been like. Not it is what it is, but it's like, right, we're here, we're challenging. Mm. Let, let's see what we can do. Where I think, looking at the Emirates, and I think, it's, I think it's more to do with the fans than rather than kind of the manager or the players. Mm. But it's just kind of like, we, we have to do this. Like, if we don't do it, it's a bit of a fair... I'm not saying that's all, all Arsenal fans. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. This, the general sentiment. Yeah, yeah, and especially kind of how many points you had. It's natural to feel that way, though. Yeah. Mm. It's natural no, granted, but I feel like it's it's taken a sense of like, taking the pressure from the crowd and it seems to have translated onto the pitch quite easily. Because this isn't the first time you've conceded a goal in the first like, two or three minutes of a game at the Emirates. Like, it happened against Bournemouth. I think it happened in another game as well. Mm, mm. And I think it's just, it's all a bit like, Highly strong at the minute, like it doesn't seem like there's a relaxed atmosphere. Like, the pressure's on at, at the start uh, of the season. The pressure's on. But the thing is, like, it's a bit of an unnecessary pressure because because of how well they played. Granted, they dropped points against Liverpool right out of this at Anfield. The game against West Ham, okay, you can say the other one off, but you come back to the Emirates, you're like, you know what, we Southampton, we should be able to roll over Southampton without the pressure. I like just be like, well, no, that's not, that's, that, that's not, it, the, the pressure's on, the pressure's on number one, the pressure's on because we're at the tail end of the season and City are, are they're, they're full steam ahead, right? They're catching, they're literally, they're right behind you. On top of that, like I said, every team now you now face towards the end of the season is either fighting for relegation, they're fighting for Europe. Or they're fighting because they just don't want to get steamrolled by Arsenal. Do you understand? No, Do you right, understand? But remember last week we said Arsenal should, don't really need to change anything going into the Southampton game. Like the question was asked like, oh, what does Arteta have to change going into this game? You didn't have to change anything because the way they started against Liverpool and West Ham mm. was like the, re- the regular pattern. But I want to just touch on that because, but, but to Isaac's point, I think what you're saying works logically um, in terms of thinking it through bit by bit. But what it ignores is the scenario we're in, right? Mm-hmm. So, yes, dropping two points at Anfield is no shame. Yeah, Anfield is a difficult place to go. Fine, the West Ham game can happen. So you get come to Southampton on a Friday. But the problem is, what those two games mean in the overall scenario you're in now is the, what's applying the pressure. So every time you've drawn, you know, you've got the, you've got the preeminent team of our time on your neck, right? And every time you drop those points, mm-hmm. it gets tighter. Your margin of error gets smaller and smaller. And none of the... I mean, we've got the second youngest um, squad in the league. So none of those guys have dealt with the pressure at this level and that weight of expectation. So even if you combine the three... So, so number one, this is the first title, meaningful title challenge the team has had or mm-hmm. first tangible taste of title challenge the team's had in... I don't know how many years, mm-hmm. right? Yes. <clears throat> 19 years. Considering the average age of the team is 22... <laughs> none of the, it's safe to say none of them were around in that last title push. It's no, very safe. No, to say. I get I get that, but I still think you've got to kind of take a bit of responsibility and be like, you know what, we we're able to get the fundamentals right in our gameplay. We've shown that we can do that. I know there's pressure on because of fair enough. You dropped uh, four points, points out yeah, of the last yeah. out of the last six, and you can't you want to get back on track. But I still think it, it's just taking too much of a toll on them when they should be, should be like, you know what? Let's just get back to basics. You can't afford it. The reason why you can't, the reason, that's it. I, I agree with you, they probably should have, but the reason why they're probably not is because, number one, they've got the City game on the horizon and they're probably thinking, they're not probably not even thinking about this game, the Southampton yeah. game. They're probably thinking, that game that's coming. We need to be on point for that game. So then, if we but you're, but you're and only so, on point so, for that if game. we won those games or we did better in those games yeah. where we were in the lead, yeah. that game we would be less important. Exactly. And and just to just to add the podcast you put in the group the other day, yes. I was listening to it. And um, you know, this is all spe- secondary information and, and whatnot. 
But yeah, I know what you're going to say, yeah. One of the podders said, listen, I've got direct, direct information that they're now worrying about City. Beforehand, they weren't. Now, we're the wa- they're time. worrying. Yeah. The first time in the season that they're now worrying about what's, okay, what's happening. Really, really well, really just to add to your viewpoint, sorry, quickly, just to add to before you answer, I think the other thing we're not accounting for is it's easy for us to say because we can have a certain distance from the game, right? We love the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, we spend literally every day <laughs> talking about football to each other yeah. and the rest of our of our of our close friends, right? Literally, I, I don't know. I think if we tallied up how many hours a day we talk about football, <laughs> a lot. So, someone would worry about us. But imagine being those players. You know what fans are like, right? Imagine how many DMs they get mm. when they go to just have something to eat. We're relying on you, Saka. This that like. I think there's lots of small things that we don't experience day to day that feed into even the stuff you hear on the pitch. You know, when you're going to take a corner, yes, a cherry, but you've been at the stadium. You hear what people say to players, etc. So I think I think we have to, when we're thinking about the pressure, the mental impact of the situation, even though it's a positive one overall, I think we can't discount some of the things that we're not seeing and experiencing as, as fans. I, I can only imagine, even when they just go to the supermarket, just go to the shop, you're getting petrol for your car. You can imagine fans, and they mean it in a positive way, okay. but it's, Oh, Saka, you know, you're doing it for the club, mate. You know, my yeah, son I, wasn't I, even born last time. You like, won the title. Oh, I yeah, get that. Yeah. You can imagine. If you compare it to, say, like, the Leicester title win, and granted, Leicester mm. would have had a older average age. Yeah. But how many of those Leicester players were in a in a position to say, oh, I've done this before? Like, you you got to look at the Arsenal squad. Like, you've got uh, Teddy, who's, who's won leagues in Scotland. Mm. You've got Zinchenko, who's won leagues. You've got... Yep. Uh, that's Jesus, why, that's why he was doing his best Phil Brown impression <laughs> in the middle of the pitch. You got Jesus, who, who, who's won leagues. Yes. You've got Party, who's a very established pro. You've got Jacques, who's got an established pro. So I get the age thing, but there's there's enough players in that squad mm. to be like, you know what, lads, I've been in this situation before. I've been in high pr- pressure, mm. high pressure cooking situation to be like, this is what we got to do. So I, I get you're saying that the first time, but if you take the Leicester situation. Yeah. There's, there's not much difference. I think in the expectations of... were different. It, yeah. Whatever Leicester did that season would have been amazing, right? So if you think about the narrative of our, like, the narrative of Arsenal for a long period of time, you know the decline. You've not won a league. Yeah, you won the FA Cups. You know, the, I think the the expectation of Arsenal. Let's let's think about even the narrative amongst the pundits for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Amongst the mainstream football media. Do you mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Liverpool had it for a long time until you won that first league. Do you understand? It's been 30 years. The Gerrard thing. So. But for Leicester, it was all, wow. Oh, hold on. Well, you're actually going to, it was, But well, there was still happened, pressure because they, you've got, essentially, you've got a city backing you rather than a portion of. No, no, I agree. A I just city. Think it was and they even had like, you say the pundit, like, they, like uh, Gary Lineker was like, oh, if they win the league, I'm going to present back your day in my pants. Yeah, yeah. So there's pressure <laughs> coming. <there's> pressure <laughs> I, I, from, yeah, I remember that. But yeah, okay, the right. comes but from I, feel, I feel like it was different. The reason why I feel like it was different um, with Leicester. With Leicester and and the way it is with Arsenal, because number one, I feel like for a lot of those players, it was they were older. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm. Let's be honest, a lot of them. No, I don't really think anyone thought, "Oh, Leicester are going to bounce. They're going to win it and bounce back and, and defend the title next season." <laughs> it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. A lot of these men. The season after. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the, a lot of these men. A lot of these men were thinking. Like, this is it. Like, we can go. So a lot of these, man, the motivation, I think the pressure, they were feeding off of that pressure. Like, yeah, this is it. We, we're going to do it. We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. And that was driving them to come out each week and steamroll teams. Mm. Whereas, well, not maybe steamroll, but they're putting... Get the results. Get yeah. the results that they needed. Whereas I think this Arsenal team, the pressure is different. It's kind of like an expectation. But... In a way, even though even though they've not they've not won it in, mm. in ages, there's a there's a different yeah, kind of feel true. about but this to, pressure. To, give to, to be fair, again, the point I made worked in this because I, I don't know what the feeling was like in Leicester. I don't know, <laughs> you know, when it got to February, March, when Vardy's uh <laughs> filling up his car, that same pressure. So yeah, you're and to right. be fair, going back to Leicester season, they lost an important game against you. Like Arsenal well, we did a double on them. Arsenal haven't really lost an important game. And, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. To. No, but, hey, but hey, no, hey. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, there's been, there's been <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help it. There's been no real situation where you can say oh, Arsenal, man. No, no, no. I agree, and that's and that's why I'm, I'm a bit surprised at like the whole kind of doldrum. But I tell you, kind of typical fashion. 
it's not, not typical fashion. Because, because, no, it's, it's not, it might not be typical fashion, but having that in the back of your mind where a, your team constantly, year on year, falls apart around the same time. Every, no, as a, as a fan, as as a, I, no, no, but as a fan, yeah. I wouldn't be mad as an Arsenal fan that sees this happen and go, they just automatically go to autopilot and go, oh, yeah, we're crumbling, yeah, but we're falling we apart. Lot, since we last won the, the last title, how many times have we generally been in the running? You can't say it's typical fashion. Yeah, maybe we've bottled top four once or twice. No, when I say, say typical, typ- when I say typical fashion, like uh, to Keith, what Keith was saying was like he's surprised at the kind of dreariness of the fans. But I'm thinking, well, they, when you've been used or ex- uh, used to something happening year on year, mm. and then the signs of it start to happen, you can't be mad at them or be saying, confused year, at them year, thinking it's not like we've in previous years we've been even been close to winning. No, that. but year on year you've you've been in in good form, and then you hit February or Jan- end of January or start of March, and you start with this run of losses. I don't but know. We I, haven't lost, you know, bro. I know, but no, that's <laughs> ten games unbeaten, lost, bro. But you, you haven't lost, but you've dropped points, and all of a sudden the Arsenal fans are like, oh, oh, the, oh, the my Liverpool God. game, the Liverpool game, anyone would be happy to get a point there. Yeah, yeah. the West Ham game. Mm. Should have won. Not when the, the game Southampton like game in isolation should have won. The first goal triggered the rest of yeah, what happened in that exactly. game. Clean. If that first goal I'll from Aaron Ramsdale wasn't just given to them, it yeah. doesn't happen like that. We beat them 100. percent so And then this goes, can't legislate for that as well. And then exactly. this goes back to my question from last week. This about Arteta and his management. Nah. That can't be Arteta's management. Friday, you can't. Arteta's can't. not in goal, bro. Ram- he didn't go to the book. So as a manager, two minutes in, what's he supposed to do? What's he supposed to do? And even then, that's the, probably the perfect time to concede a goal. So he's thinking we can still go to win this. In another era. You turn into Pep Mourinho. You know what? What get Pep on that Mourinho? sideline. That's what he's, he's doing all day, bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he starts he's, he's got one foot on the pitch half He the must game, be the most annoying manager to play for, bro. <laughs> bro. You see if I play for him, I'll be like, bro, come on here. Bro, you want mad. to wear your boots? But yeah, I, th- I think we're doing that thing where we're not kind of giving credit to Southampton. Yeah. Or we're kind of looking at Arsenal. Well, I was going like, well, to come to that because that finish was not a joke. That was Yeah, it was very good. And I think... At the comment, commentary, I think it was Carragher. He's talking about, oh, Ramsdale's got to save that. I, I don't know, you know. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> our fans would be it. If it was, was Ward Prowse that joke. scored that, everyone's going, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that finishes a joke. I, I think Southampton yeah. played well, and I think... I think they could have beat Arsenal, you know. Well, they should have. I think Walcott kind of toned this. I think Walcott kind of toned this. I think Walcott toned this performances. I think they shot themselves in the foot, though, going so defensive. At half time. At half time. Yeah, yeah he was playing. Like, he was playing for the draw. Yeah. What's his name? He was uh, playing for the draw. I can't remember the guy. The, the guy who scored. Alcaraz. Alcaraz. Yeah, yeah. He was giving. He wasn't giving Arsenal the run around, but he was being enough of a problem to oh, say, right. Was, yeah. I can understand why he went so defensive, but I think he should have given it at least another ten or fifteen minutes to see if you see if they could have nicked to one before. I'll be honest. You know I mean? If I so, have stuff like that, if I have scored, and I've assisted. given that assist, we're having words. <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah. draw, you take it off. No, but, no, 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 we're having words. But, but, they could have come out on smoke, and then right? Smoked. And you lot are set up to, for the counter attack. They could have come out on yeah, smoke, yeah, hit yeah. you, bang, bang, bang. Mm. I think what he's done there is, is he's um, negated that possibility yeah. by just going straight defensive from yeah, the yeah, jump. Yeah, like I said, I understand And why just he going, yeah. and he's probably no, 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 actually, I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not here. I want to do a West Ham here or, or whatever it is, right? But the reason I said they probably sh- it's your free one up. You know, yeah, even I though think they the might have scored their third a bit too early, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it was like 50, 50 well, we did, or something we, like that. Yeah, but it was it was what three one until the 80th minute or something. 80th minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. They kept us out to be fair. Yeah, quite so well. you had seven minutes to, to penetrate yeah, to, to sort it out. But but I, look, I, I think you always hear and read things around mentality in that elite level sport, right? Having mm. a certain mentality. I mean. Roy Keane's probably going to be muttering it into his grave mentality, you know, mental, blah, blah, blah. But I do think that we're seeing that in action is very, very palpable with our Arsenal team. Because again, when the things were going wrong, you started to see things that you haven't seen. And I think, I think the actual, for me personally, the actual explanation to what Keith was saying is that the guys are now being measured by their own standards, right? People have seen 26, 27 games of us playing a certain way, even when we've not started well, still recovering in a certain way, mm-hmm. beating certain teams. So that's the measurement that you're getting measured by. So when I start seeing my Odegaard misplace passes that are usually oh. simple for him, I just know that today is not the day. It's not, the day, it's not happening. It's yeah, not yeah, happening. I want to shout out Lavia because he, he done a good job. It, like, it wasn't until he came off 
that Odegaard started playing football. Mm. You know, I don't know if you okay. noticed that. So yeah, I, yeah. I remember early in the season, I can't remember who they were playing, but I, I remember watching that game on Sky Sports and I think it was Romeo Lavia, uh, Bella Kocha, and uh, Joe Rebo that they had on the pitch at the time. Mm. And the three of them were absolutely mm. balling. And I said, yo, who the hell are these guys? Mm. Um, Lavia is uh, signing from City, right? Yeah, yeah, apparently, yeah. Apparently, I can see the pedigree. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's dialed up enough interest where our teams are, are now looking Arsenal at him. Been yeah, interested I, for yeah, and I'll City apparently him. have also yeah. uh, inquired about yeah, possibility serious, taking yeah. him back. But look, I don't want to dwell too much on this. For, of course for, you don't. For obvious reasons. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. the time is ticking and all of that. I mean, look, permutations are this now. If we still want it to be in our hands... We've got to go to City on Wednesday. We've got to win every game for and win. City on Wednesday. That's the first one. Well, no, do. because they, you put a loss on their record as well. So it goes both ways. You win on Wednesday, then it's a different, then it's, then it's slightly different. You, you almost think you, you put back a very small pressure, <clears throat> but more than you had before the game, you put back some margin of error back into it. Mm-hmm. It's at Etienne. <clears throat> they are, I think they've won. Uh, 11 or 12 games in a row. City are going to do you lot good and proper. It, Mr. Harland is about... Good and proper. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Mark, what are you saying for Wednesday? Honestly. I'm confident we win. You know, look it. That's You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm confident that we'll go there and try our best to get a result. And not a draw. I'm talking three points. Because we've done well there. I cannot see it happening. You can't see it happening because it's City, so, 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 so I'm clear, you're confident we're going to win? I'm confident we're going to try our best. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. I'm confident we're going to try our best. We're going to take the last three games into account. And I won't be surprised if we win. Mm-hmm. All right. Listen, Keith, I'm, listen I'm fuming quickly. I'm fuming, yeah? Because the way we've been dropping points, especially that Southampton game, mm. it's been poor. Certain players need to just take a good look at themselves. Thomas Partey oh. being one of them. Yeah. And I've been cussing Thomas Partey for a long time and then being on side with Partey and yeah. now I'm back to, bro, what are you doing? Use your common sense. But if 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 it, if it doesn't fix up in the first yeah. half, he needs to come off. And see, I don't want to be lazy, yeah? But I do feel like Thomas Partey, there's no middle with him. There isn't. See, he's really he's good that, or He's really, either really on song or he's just having an absolute madness. Absolute madness. The meltdown he had after the West Ham after he made that mistake was 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 mental. This game, I mean, Who's the your, shot he had at the end. Yeah. yeah, that was wild. <laughs> that decision making that was wild. Epitomized his his performance for the last couple of games. It was Who, absolutely shocking. Who's your backup? There is Jorginho. Yeah. Jorginho. It's our backup. <laughs> Listen, if we're you know his what, backup in terms of position, but not in terms of <laughs> how he ex- executes. Nah. Like, even his quality, his passing is good, but in terms of what you want that player to do in that position, Jorginho is not, right, yeah, not good me, enough. Let me tell you this: if yeah. we if if we had Jorginho on a pitch mm-hmm. versus Southampton in the latter stages, yeah, do you think we win that game? I'm not entirely sure, then. bro. His ball retention, yeah. is better than Thomas Partey's. That's fine. So but then him but, finding a hole, mm-hmm. the, the the gap to feed another player, yeah. Is more likely than Thomas Partey. Yeah, but generally he's feeding Odegaard, etc. We just discussed how Odegaard distributed the ball after he got it from Partey. Nah, I reckon we win that game if, if Jorginho's on the pitch. Nah, I, I think maybe some decisions are made better than what Partey did, but I, I can't stress that all the way to say we would have scored because again, we got in positions where we could have scored and chances weren't taken. Right? Yeah, yeah. They, they defended. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be fair to Partey, we haven't lost a game in the Premier League when he's played. Yeah. And he wasn't awful. He just wasn't he was up to, awful. No, nah, he wasn't. He just bro, wasn't he was up awful, to bro. the highest standard. I, nah, I don't he think awful. he was awful. Now nah, Southampton, he was bad. He was awful, bro. Yeah, I don't think he was awful. Bro, he was awful, bro. Ah, cool. You probably didn't watch Arsenal like I was watching. Right, so, him. He's so awful, bro. I, I don't even want to ask you, but go on. What, what's the result on Wednesday? Good and proper. <laughs> <laughs> City, City uh, are going to run riot. I, all I right, can right, thanks, see thanks, it thanks. now. All right, I'm right. going for a um, four one. Ah, oh, score predictions four, as well, right? Four one. one. Um, four, one, uh, four one. Yeah, I think I think City will win, but the Prem's got so many twists and turns. I wouldn't be surprised if Arsenal nick something. So but, I'm gonna be honest with you, know, if I weren't in this podcast, I don't think I could watch that game. Smart, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Uh, I'm actually considered not much. what's going on. It's too much. It's free much. Mm. <laughs> four one. That's all I'm saying. Football, mm. man. Okay. I, I, I think we're I think um I don't know what I think. 
Score draw is my optimistic uh, prediction, mm-hmm. which isn't good enough. We need a win. But well, a score draw, I think, is where we'll get to. Um, I think it'll be a slightly frantic game. Um, and I just don't know if the team can recover enough from the last three results to be in a place to execute at the level you need to against Manchester City for the time you need to, you know? Yeah. Like we've seen many teams, you can't play well against Manchester City for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You have to play well against them for 97 minutes. Mm-hmm. Even I'm if sure. the game was only 95, you still need to be playing well when you get in the tunnel. I'm so, actually having uh, nightmares about um, Rob Holden versus Holland. Bro. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, man. Ooh, no disrespect to Mikel Antonio, but after the way Mikel Antonio <laughs> dealt with him, Holland is like T1000 right now. <laughs> So, <laughs> Rob, man, uh, all the best, buddy. All the best.